are. All right. We are here with Miss Sarah Elspeth Patterson. I just like saying your whole name because it's a lot of fun. And um, you are involved with the Persist Health Project. That's right. Tell us about the project. Sure. So Persist is a group of New York-based folks who run a health services program. So we started as health education. My background is in education. So uh, we started providing health services to sex workers um, in a peer-led model. So sex workers teaching other sex workers things like safer sex practices, um, health and wellness tips, all health focused things. And then um, more recently we moved on to providing direct health services and um, all of the folks in the organization are either current or former sex workers or committed allies. That sounds incredibly useful and like um, something that not very many other people are doing. Can you think of any other one more. There's one more. Uh, St. James Infirmary is the original sex worker clinic. It's in San Francisco, and it was founded in the late 90s. So there's one on either side of the country. I know, right? If you're not in New York or San Francisco, but there, there are programs. There's harm reduction programs, and there's other programs where sex workers might be working. Sex workers, you know? They're ev I believe that sex workers are everywhere. You just don't know that they're there yet. <laughs> <laughs> I say that all the time. I get people saying, oh, yeah, I, I wish I could meet a girl like you. I wish I saw a girl like you. I've never seen a porn star. Yes, you have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you totally. You just don't know. You just don't know yet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let's see. So you've already outlined the goals of Persist. That was actually what I was one thing I was going to ask you about. <laughs> well, I can say something about the model that we use. Oh, that would be great. The idea is that when you see other folks like you, so when sex workers see other sex workers in leadership positions um, creating wellness with each other, that it's a way of collectively healing. And I personally believe that wellness is a bunch of different components. It's not just about going to your general practitioner or going to the OBGYN or taking some herbs or like making sure that you have enough NyQuil when you're sick. It's about using a holistic model, whole model of health. So thinking about occupational safety as part of health. So thinking about like the dungeon that you work in and the other folks that work there, are they healthy? Do they, do you feel like they make good decisions for themselves? Are you feel, do you feel empowered in that space? Do you like your boss? Things like that, you know, not everybody likes their boss, whether they're in the sex industry or not. <laughs> so those are different things to think about in terms of wellness. So we sort of expand the model out to not just include direct health services, but to include other ways of thinking about wellness. Excellent. So you do a lot of stuff. And, and you don't just do stuff for sex workers. You also run a workshop on how to be an ally to someone in the sex industry. Do you, would you expand on that a little? Sure. Yeah, we run, a, we run a bunch of different types of workshops. There, There's more information on the workshops on our website. It's um, persisthealthproject.org. Um, and we do an ally workshop and we also do cultural competency trainings for medical providers. So, yeah. But the idea behind the, the ally workshop is that I think a lot of folks um, particularly in communities around the sex work community, so like kinky folks or queer folks, like they feel like they want to be a better ally. Like they feel like they are an ally, but they, they're like, well, what could I do to like really, really be committed to that? And so that workshop is designed to take folks from like, I feel good about sex workers existing to like, I know how to support sex workers. And that's very important. Just. Uh from the sex workers' point of view, and also from other people. You know, sex workers, I think, are kind of a minority. You know, not everybody's doing it. So to have allies who can really talk to us, uh, talk to the, the goals, I think, is, is good, and to, to support people. Yeah, I mean, it's one thing It's one thing to be like, I, I feel OK about sex workers existing in the world. And it's another thing to be like, I feel OK about talking to my friend about when she has a bad day at work, right? Exactly. Those are totally different. I'm trying not to keep you too long. I know that you have to get all the way back to the city from here. So I just have two more questions for you. Um, and this is kind of a silly question, but what 
term or phrase did you learn about through uh, sex work or through your experiences with Persist that you really enjoy, that you really think is really funny, you know? <laughs> Should I give an example? <laughs> yeah, Sorry, yeah. I know that question's really out of left field. Um, as a cam girl, guys like to type with only one hand because they're busy with the other hand, so things get shortened a lot. And people will say, will want to say like, "Thank you, I just came and it was awesome." So they'll type T Y B B for "Thank you, baby," because um, ah, okay. that's easy to type with one hand. Yeah. And now every time I see, you know, BB cream or something, I just crack <laughs> the fuck up because it's TYBB, you know, and anytime I have to say thank you to someone, I say TYBB, and they look at me like, the hell is wrong with you? <laughs> yeah, what are you talking but about? I figure there's got to be some similar things that you've had, to, uh, you've had experience with through Persist or something where it's like, ha, that's silly. <laughs> Can't, yeah, I can't really think of anything. Oh, no, um, I I'm trying, spot. but I can't. No, I, I tanked my interview. <laughs> everything's ruined. <laughs> no, I'm not really sure that I that I can think of anything. There's definitely a lot of industry vernacular that you mm -hmm. have to get used to and sort of adjust to. But um, oh, I, well, I teach uh, LGBTQ youth mm -hmm. and. Um, I didn't know what a verse was until I started working with LGBTQ youth. It's a switch, um, but it's like if there's a top and a bottom, mm -hmm. there's a verse, like, oh, like something versatile. versus something. Yeah, versatile. Okay. Yeah. So I didn't know that term until until I was working with queer youth um, and shady. I always like that one. Shady. Like casting shade on someone is to like be passing a judgment on them and so if you say like oh that sweater is cute like that's shady <laughs> like you need to not be don't don't cast shade yeah okay see those are cool those are both good yeah yeah i like it i use shady a lot now I tend, <laughs> I, i'm like, trying to work it into my other non-queer situations and try and get other people to say it awesome yeah, and, and now everybody else who uh, watches the video will as well. Yeah, don't be shady. <laughs> <laughs> don't be shady with your sex workers. Um, and the last question I have for you, the uh, election has just passed, so we have a lot of interesting new laws and things. Um, and I'm sure that you are familiar with the uh, California condoms in porn law. So yeah. I was wondering what your take on that was. Yeah, I think that... Um, I think that sex workers need to have more ways to make self-determining decisions, not less. Mm -hmm. So while I think that it's important to regulate industries, I think that um, we should focus on the criminal aspects of sex work being minimized rather than focusing on continuing to regulate sex workers. Um, so. Well, I think it might be less of an issue if we lived in a society in which more forms of sex work were decriminalized and people were facing less forms of regulation. I think um, asking folks to use condoms by force will lead to potentially more coercive situations for mm. the workers themselves, right? Because ultimately the people who end up being in charge of making sure that that regulation is followed is owners, not workers right mm -hmm. so um, I'm personally interested in the workers that that we serve and that I know and my friends I'm worried about them not about uh, a boss or a manager <laughs> that's just my personal bias <laughs> no no I I, I asked you <laughs> <laughs> all right is there anything else you would like to tell the viewers about persist how to find you anything you need from them yeah um, well, Persist is doing a fundraiser at the end of the month, so if, if folks are in the New York City area, you can check out our Facebook or our website for more information on how you can donate, um, because we are gearing up for more health services this fall, and so it would be really awesome if we had donations. Um, and 5% of the funds are going to go to an LGBTQ organization in New York City that's been impacted by Hurricane Sandy. Oh, so, wow. yeah, so that'll be part of it. Um, and other than that, yeah, just check out the website and the Facebook and um, stay tuned for more. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much for sharing your time with us.